Okay, thank you again for being here. My name is Skylar Marston Beal. I use she and they pronouns, and I'm the Director of Orientation and Leadership here at Puget Sound. We're thrilled to have you here with us today, and I'm going to now turn it to my panelists here to introduce themselves, and I would ask you all to share your name, pronouns if you choose, your title, your job title for us, why you're here, what you're representing today, um, and then the most fun thing you've done in Tacoma this summer? Uh, hi, uh, uh, I'm Emma Grace, uh, she, she, her pronouns. I'm the Resident Student Association president. And the favorite, my, the most fun thing that I've uh, been doing in Tacoma the, over the summer is that I frequently take walks just, just all over. And I love to count how many cats I see when walking around the neighborhoods. So far, my record is nine. And I, I pet five of them. It was a good day. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany Williams, uh, she, her pronouns. I am a student success coach out of the Office um, for Student Success. And I would say just one of the fun things I've done this summer is going to the Tacoma Farmer's Market down um, Broadway, our downtown area. One of my favorite restaurants um, always operates there called Gateway to India. And I've heard a rumor that some of the immersive experiences might be going there. So hopefully some of you might get to check that out. Hi, Emily Napier, she, her pronouns, one of our resident directors on campus. Um, I oversee Seward, TP, and Trimble. Um, my favorite thing I've done in the summer. So there's this new place in Tacoma called Howdy Bagel. It's so good, so sick. Um, I recommend getting the plain bagel with egg and cheese and Howdy sauce, classic. The coffee is also good there. Um, so check it out when you're here. Hi, my name is Ileana Barnes Diaz and I use she, her pronouns. And I am a passages coordinator this year. Um, so involved in planning pastas and um, my one of my favorite things or the most fun things I've done this summer in Tacoma was I got to go check out the Lincoln District Food Walk and they have it's like a massive amount of food trucks and other kind of like small business vendors and it was really fun there's live music and um, this isn't a rumor I can tell you it's for sure happening. Some of our <laughs> some of our passages groups are gonna go get to check that out. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. My name is Anya Cavender. I use she her pronouns. I'm also a passages coordinator with Ileana. Um, one of the most fun things I've done in Tacoma this summer is just going and swimming in the sound with my friends and jumping off the docks. So I've been really enjoying doing that. Great, thank you all. I forgot to add my favorite thing that I've done in Tacoma this summer. There's a lot of food themed. We've got some foodies on, on the panel today. I got to go with the Passages team to taste the Northwest. And that was also very fun. Lots of great food to try there, so. All right, my first question today is going to be for Emily. Um, and that question is quite simply, when can I move in? Yeah, I'm excited for you to be here. Um, Move-in date is August 18th. Um, you should have gotten a letter in the mail mid-June, um, late June, talking about when you can move in. Um, it kind of varies by your room number. Um, so August 18th, um, starting at 9 a.m., we're really excited to see you here. Great, and we'll pass that mic back to the passages coordinators for a follow-up. So what if my move-in time isn't until 11 on August 18th? When can I check in for passages and what else is there to do on move-in day? Yeah, so there's a few different things that you're going to want to do during move-in day and a few different activities and stuff that's available. Um, one of the things is passages check-in begins at 9 a.m. and that will be um, out in front of the welcome center on the patio for check-in. Um, another thing you get to do is pick up your logger card, which is your ID card that um, swipes you into your residence hall. And also you swipe to get food um, in the diner 
in our student union building, um, and you can use it at the cafes as well. Um, there'll be some different departments on campus or different campus resources that'll be tabling, as long as our associated students of Puget Sound, our student body, they'll have a table and our CUPS radio station. Um, and what else, Ileana, do you wanna talk about? One more thing I guess that I'll add is that people wearing these green passages shirts um, on move-in day, if you have any questions, concerns, they are a great resource to go to. All our leaders will be wearing these shirts and so they will be equipped to help you get to where you need to go, answer questions or find the right person to answer a question that you have. Great, anything? great, thank you. We'll pass it back to Emily. So other than August 18th, are there other important dates that we should take note of? And if so, what are those dates? Yeah, so the first one, um, you can start sending packages August 1st. Um, so coming up here pretty soon. So if you're someone that's maybe flying in or you don't want to you know, load all your boxes here in your car, um, you can start sending those into our mailroom. And then on move-in day, you can actually pick up um, the things that you've shipped. There'll be some tarps out here. Um, you can grab your belongings there on move-in day. Um, the other two things will be on your passages schedule, but I just want to highlight that Res Life is kind of um, helping host one of these and then um, we'll be leading another one of these. Um, our all hall meetings are happening on August 18th, so the night that you get here, um, and you'll be meeting with your student leader, um, your resident assistant student leader um, in your quad. So that will be for South Quad in the middle um, grassy area and the North Quad in the middle grassy area together at 7.30 p.m. You'll walk over, you'll hear about some of the residence hall policies and how to build community and be with one another this year. Um, and then we have our first year unwrapped, August 26th. It's going to be awesome um, from 5 to 7 p.m. So check it out. There's going to be like arts and food and time to hang out and listen to music and be together. And those will all be in your quads too. Um, so there'll be a North Quad one and a South Quad one. Great, all right, Emma, what is the Resident Student Association? Uh, the Resident Student Association, a student association or RSA is a group of students uh, that each represent a residence hall or residence hall group that get together to advocate for students, any issues or additions to the residence halls uh, and, and plan fun events uh, for their halls and areas. We've, we've put on karaoke nights and um, crafts nights. Uh, uh, and uh, anyone uh, in the residence hall can be a part of it and come to big group meetings where we talk about things for the entire campus. Great, thank you. We'll stick with Res Life area for now, but folks, we're starting to get questions about packing. Uh, we're starting to see that for in passages, but also around residence halls. So Emily, could you talk maybe a little bit about what are basic items that would be helpful to have in the residence halls? Yeah, so the basic item list is pretty long. So just hang here with me, okay? I am gonna read it. So if you're someone maybe that has already done your shopping, this can just be like a checklist in your head. Like, yeah, I bought that and bought that and bought that. Um, if you're someone that hasn't started yet, that's okay. Um, I have a list for you right here, okay? Um, so bed linen. So you're gonna want extra long twin size for our residence halls. Um, blankets, something to cover up with that's comfortable for you. Um, a pillow, or maybe you don't like a pillow and that's not for you, that's fine. Um, I'm suggesting a pillow. <laughs> um, a desk lamp, if you'd like one of those, towels and toiletries, um, a shower caddy for your bathroom supplies. Um, know that there's going to be a distance between your room and the bathroom. And so any, any like thing you can help that will help you hold your toiletries is going to be helpful. Shower shoes, I'm suggesting that. You're going to be sharing bathrooms with other people. Um, so shower shoes are going to be helpful. Um, an umbrella or waterproof jacket. Surprise, it rains here. <laughs> um, so you might, you're gonna wanna address for that um, and have those clothes ready for you when you get here. Um, some warm clothes um, for, you know, the fall and when it starts to like cool off a little bit. Something that I um, wish someone would have told me when I was packing, um, I, I didn't go to school here, but um, in this climate is that 
you are going to have maybe an opportunity to go home for fall break. So thinking about that transition between the weather here, maybe you don't need to pack your big puffy winter coat if you're not going home um, or if you're going home in the fall and then you can maybe grab that when you go home for fall break. Um, so thinking about um, some of the times you're gonna be going home and you know being intentional about that. Um, a power strip extension. I recommend the long ones. Many of you are gonna have roommates and it's nice to be have a plug in that, you know, you have some distance there. So there's some six foot ones that are nice. Um, small throw rugs or an area rug, if you wanna like decorate your space, they are tiled. Most of our um, hall room floors in the first year areas are tiled. So it's kind of nice to have like something soft that you can touch um, when you're getting in and out of bed. Um, command strips, um, anything that's not going to damage our walls, um, you're gonna wanna have, if you're gonna hang up any photos or posters or anything like that. Um, command strips are great for that. Uh, um, they're easy to take down too. Um, and Ari can show you how to do that. A few microwavable dishes, so like coffee mugs and glasses. There are some in the common room kitchen area, um, but having your own is really nice too, being able to clean it and take it back to your room. Um, hangers for your clothes. Um, any type of extra storage things you might want, crates, bins, um, things to go under your bed, things like that. Um, an extra fan. It is warm when you first get here. Some, um, I think, um, it was warmer than I anticipated my first summer here. So just knowing that when you first get here, it might be nice to have a fan. There's no AC in our residence hall. So um, having one that can be, you know, propped up next to your window, um, one that maybe you and your roommate are sharing or, you know, you're using your own. A laundry basket. Um, detergent. What I'll say about detergent is our uh, laundry facilities and our units can be kind of finicky. So the high efficiency detergents are going to be really helpful, especially like the Tide Pods. You know, those are quick. You can just throw them in. Um, but anything that is high efficiency liquid detergent, and they will typically say that on the container, um, will be nice to have. Um, a protective mattress cover, if you'd like that, just gives it a little bit extra cushion. I, would, I, tend, I think the mattresses can tend to be a little like tougher. So some people do like a mattress pad and then a mattress um, protector to go over just to like soften, soften their bed a little bit. Um, and you might want to consider if you're a gamer or someone that, you know, you don't want your Wi-Fi to be slow. Um, it, it's not typically slow in the halls, but if you're someone that wants to be really quick, you can have an Ethernet cord that will plug into your room um, so you can game um, and feel pretty safe about that. Um, and you're allowed to have appliances in your rooms. They just can't have any type of coil. So you can't have like a hot plate or anything, um, but you can have a refrigerator, um, anything like that um, without a, a hot coil. And just a reminder, because I know that was a long list, um, coordinate with your roommate. So if you have a roommate, figure out what they're bringing, um, figure out what they're willing to share and not share. Um, they don't have to share anything with you, but it's great if you if you both are willing to share a refrigerator instead of having two in the room. Um, I find that you don't always need that much space, even if you think you will. Um, so sharing those appliances is gonna be really helpful. Um, and, then the, and I don't know if anyone else is going to say this, but um, we do something called Grizz's Garage here. Um, and that will be open on move-in day at 9 a.m. in Thomas 270. And there will be people that will be willing to tell you where that's at too. So if you're like, oh, wow, I don't I don't want to spend all this money on a fridge um, if I might just only have it for a year or two. Um, so that's a really good spot where people from last year have donated some of their appliances, even rugs, decor, things like that. Um, pretty basic room supplies that are really affordable. Um, and so you can stop in there and see if there's something that you want, want to check out that day. That's all I got for you. Great, thank you. We'll turn to Tiffany now. Um, Tiffany, how do I know who my assigned success coach is? Yeah, so if you attended the last session, you would have met my colleague, Will Holland. There's just the two of us that are splitting the whole freshman class and all transfer students into two groups. Um, so we're, we're divided by residence halls. And to make it simpler, we decided I will be South Quad and Will will be North Quad. So just to give you a list of what that is, um, and also I have all off-campus students. So if you're living off-campus, that's me. If you're in Seward, Thomas, Todd Fibs, or Trimble, that's also me. If you're in Anderson Langdon, Harrington, Oppenheimer, Schiff, or Smith, that is all Will. And we've been sending out text messages. Some of you probably have already heard from us. Some of you probably already met with us, which is great, but we really wanna have a Zoom meeting with everyone if possible before they get onto campus. Um, so just look out for a text from us and whoever you get it from, you'll know that's your success coach. Great, thank you. A follow up to that. We've all been assigned our faculty advisors as well. So what's the difference between you and the work that you do and my faculty advisor? 
Yeah, so, you know, as, as adult professionals who, who have knowledge of what it takes to be in college, both of us can provide a lot of different services, um, but the, the biggest difference would be that your advisor, your faculty advisor, that they are the person who can help you do four-year degree planning, they can help you register for classes, um, so that is more their specialty. Um, when it comes to talking with Will and I, it can really be a support system in whatever way makes the most sense for you to utilize us. So we could just be a navigator for you if you don't know who, who to go talk to. You can always start with us. Um, another, another difference is that we are going through a training program to be certified by the International Coaching Federation. So we do have some coaching skills that are maybe a little bit different than what other services offer on campus. Um, but ultimately, the most important thing is that we don't want students to associate coming to success coaching with, with being some, something that's remedial, something that um, is, is stigmatized, like you only come to talk to us if you need help. It's great for you to come talk to us if you're looking for help, looking for support, but it also is perfectly fine to come talk to us if you're just someone who's like, I'm, I'm thriving here, but I want to make sure that there's nothing that I'm missing. I want to make sure I'm maximizing my experience here, make sure I'm setting myself up for success after college. Um, so we can just talk you through and, and help hold you accountable to some goals that you're setting um, if, if you're just looking for that kind of support. Great. In a similar vein for Emily, we have RDs and RAs. We've got, like, what's the difference? What are those? And what's the difference between them and how do I make use of them? Yeah, you probably don't have an RA in your house right now. Um, that's probably a new term for you for a leader. Um, so resident assistants, RAs, are people that are going to be living on your floor. They're students just like you, um, peers, and they're really there to mentor, guide you. Um, I kind of think of them as like compasses. <laughs> if you have a question throughout the year, they're going to be someone that you can go to. Having interpersonal contact conflicts with roommates or um, someone in a class, they're there to help guide you through that and mediate that situation. Um, so they're really uh, really a friend and someone that's gonna help mentor you and lead you throughout the, your first year here. Um, and then RDs, um, resident directors, that's what I am. We help uh, lead the RA teams on campus. Um, we help oversee the halls, help with room changes, um, planning some events, uh, lots of other things. But really, uh, I would love for you to stop by my office uh, my office will be in TP this year, 144A. So if you're living in TP, please say hi to me. Um, I want to get to know you, um, and I'm really excited to work with you this year. So, Great. All right. For Ileana and Anya, I am in a theme-based immersive experience, so I'll be coming back to campus in the evenings. What do my evenings look like? What is there going to be to do? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to start to answer this question, then see what I miss with Anya. So um, in the afternoon or in the afternoons and evenings, we have different things planned for um, that are all optional for you to choose to go to or not um, after your day of fun with your immersive experience. And some of those things include game nights or movie nights and um, different crafting kind of activities. Am I missing anything? Yeah, um, there'll be specifically, we're thinking there's a tie-dye night this year and there'll be like some Mario Kart tournament style stuff as well, um, as well as like the board games and like different things Ileana was talking about. So there'll be a wide range of options, hopefully something for everyone. Um, and again, that'll be a great place to start meeting new people that might be outside of your passages group or outside of your residence hall. I'll highlight one additional event that the Maroon Society will be hosting a social. And the Maroon Society is our student alumni association and club. And it's a really great way to meet older students as well as get connected with the alumni network right from the get-go. So that should be a pretty fun event, one of those evenings as well. Okay, Emma, how do I run for a hall governance position in my living area? I want to get involved. Uh, we will be having an info meeting uh, in addition to our first event uh, on Friday the 25th at 6 p.m. where uh, throughout the halls will be uh, for each uh, hall or I believe each hall uh, will have a uh, separate uh, meeting for anyone who's interested in uh, learning more about Hall Council or joining Hall Council. Uh, and then we'll present the positions that are open and 
anyone who's interested can express interest and then we'll do elections uh, at, on that night and figure it out from there. Great, thank you. What is RSA's first event? Uh, RSA's first event is going to be on the Monday of Passages Week, uh, the first Monday, uh, the 21st, where at 8 p.m. we'll be hosting a, a large game of glow in the dark, capture the flag, from uh, North Quad versus South Quad. It's, it's also donuts. There will, there will also be donuts involved, <laughs> most importantly. Uh, so we'll introduce RSA and then have a lot of fun. Great, thank you. So I'm going backpacking. What do I need to pack and how do I find that list? Yeah, so I'm super excited that you're going backpacking and you get to be on an outdoor overnight immersive experience. Um, we do have a packing list for backpacking and also one for car camping. Those are located on our website, pugetsound.edu. Um, and also later this week, if you keep an eye out on our Instagram account, Puget Sound Passages, we will be um, showing a little packing video, kind of what you should pack and how you should pack your backpack. Um, so we're really excited to be sharing that. So keep your eye out for that on Instagram, Puget Sound Passages. And then again, those packing lists are on the university's website. Great, thank you. So this question I'm gonna to pitch to a couple of you and it, please adapt it to sort of your areas, but it's about staying connected or, or getting connected with your various areas. So for Res Life, how do I stay connected throughout the year to hear about events and important updates? And then sort of on the, on the flip side of that, um, how do I connect with my success coach? First off, I would like to say this is most important that South Quad is going to win um, the Capture the Flag event. Um, so just get ready because we actually have to win. Um, it's the first year um, for it. So um, to, get, to get connected and stay connected, I would say um, get to know your RA. Um, they want to get to know you. They're not. Some people think they can be kind of intimidating because they can be older than you, um, but know they're there for you and they want to connect with you. They're going through two weeks of training just to learn how um, to support you and connect with you. So start up, a, start up a conversation with them, figure out how you can connect and be with one another. Um, and so I think that's your first, the first way to connect is to get to know your RA on your floor. Um, and the RAs in the rest of the building too. Um, your second way to connect, I'm going to plug all um, some of our Instagram accounts. <clears throat> so South Quad Best Quad um, is at UPS South Quad um, and the North Quad is also an awesome quad, just second best, UPS North Quad. Um, and then we have our Res Life Instagram, um, Puget Sound Res Life. What I think is really helpful about the Puget Sound Res Life is if you didn't get to tour campus, there's actually highlights of each residence hall at the top, you know, the highlight section, um, getting a little bit older, but I think those are still trendy. Um, so you can click on those and you can see all of the hall, at least a room in each hall and some of the lounge spaces that they offer, um, which is really helpful if you didn't get a chance to tour, or maybe you only toured Todd Bibbs because that's usually the room that they show when you're living in AL. Um, it'll give you an opportunity to see that space. Um, and then we have Resident Student Association, um, at it's RSA underscore Puget Sound. Um, they post a lot of their whole council meeting dates um, and the events coming up. So check them out too. Yeah. Yeah, so if you wanna connect with Will or I, whoever your success coach is, honestly, the easiest thing is just to respond to one of the texts that we've sent you. You've probably gotten a list of texts, some of which maybe look like it's a bot or something that looks like um, it went out to everyone. That's because it did. And then so we've sent some that are a little bit more personalized, but all of those come from us, both Will and I can see all of them. Um, so any of those texts that you see come from us, feel free to just respond to any of those. Um, but you have a variety of ways you can connect with us. You can go to this, the website. If you just go to the search feature on the University of Puget Sound website, um, search for success coaching or success coach or something in the like, and you'll find us. And there's a, a place right there where you can um, actually book an appointment with either of us on the website. Um, so that's the easiest 
potentially um, to actually get an appointment with us. We also have the Discord. I think most of you guys have received an email and a text message about the Discord, which is just an opportunity for you to chat with your fellow classmates, but you can also interact with Will and I on there. Um, if you did already join and you just got to the, the, the beginning part where it said welcome slash introduction and it looks like there's no one on here, well, that's because you have to be verified first. We have to know that you're actually a verified student of University of Puget Sound. So make sure you send us your information through that, or you can also just email us your information um, and, and we'll figure it out from there. If you can't figure out how to use the, the mail bot that we have on there, if you're not familiar with Discord, it might be a little bit difficult. Um, but yeah, you can connect with us on there. That's just direct messaging through Discord, but we hope you all get on there just to start interacting with your with your classmates. It's a great opportunity. Also virtual drop-in hours. This is the, the text that you have probably received most Tuesdays throughout the summer is we have virtual drop-in hours, which just means that um, we have different staff members from different offices and breakout rooms. So if you wanted to talk to Emily personally, come to drop in hours next Tuesday. If you want to talk to someone from study abroad, same thing. Um, we have about 10 different offices represented. So if you're just wanting to get some one-on-one -on -one time to ask specific questions or connect with either Will and I, it's 3 to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays. And we'll continue to do it through probably the week before passages. So once you get here, not anymore, but um, the next several weeks, if you have questions, virtual drop in hours is a great place to connect with one of us. Um, yeah, the last thing is Instagram. We also have an Instagram. I believe ours is pugetsound.successcoaching. That sounds right. We had a struggle with it getting deleted several times. <laughs> Apparently Meta thought that we were a Russian bot trying to create problems. So we got deleted, but we're, we should be good now. Um, pugetsound.successcoaching. And you can always message us on there and find the Discord link on there and find our website link on there. So Great, thank you. And now's also a great time to plug that we are gonna be wrapping up with our pre-planned questions here fairly soon. So feel free to start putting questions into the Q&A so that we can start responding to them here shortly. Thank you. Okay, so I am in a day and a half day, or yeah, one and a half day immersive experience. What will I do during those other one and a half days? What, is, what does my time look like? Okay, we have compiled a lot of different activities that are all optional for you to like pick your interest. Um, so I'm gonna try and list them all. Um, what I can remember. So uh, we're looking into like having some watercolor activities and some tote bag like making decorating activities. So, so like for like the crafty people, we have a really fun scavenger hunt that's being planned that will help you get familiar with campus and the area around campus as well. Um, and we have like little riddles that you can go with your passages group during those days or like just like a friend and go scavenger hunt to explore the area. Um, we have some other fun things that are like maybe in the works that I don't want to I don't know, maybe bowling, maybe a tree walk around campus to learn about our different rare and interesting trees and our native trees. Um, and so we're hoping that with the different kind of activities that there are and the different times of these activities that you can find things that are interesting to you and then connect with people either through your passages group by doing things together or going and signing up for something that's really interesting to you. And then you'll find other people who are also really interested in that. And that might be a way to connect again with people who are outside of your passages group or outside of your resident hall. Great, thank you. Emily, can I loft my bed? I'm so sorry. Um, this year we're not um, offering the bed lofting. Um, amenity. Um, you can, if you get into your room and it's lofted, we're not going to unlock your bed for you. Um, you can have the lofted bed. Some of the beds when you get into your room um, will be really low down. And you can just flip those, um, but we're not going to uh, loft beds this year or have facilities loft your bed. If you have an accessibility or an accommodation that we need to meet, um, you can email reslife at pugetsound.edu um, and we can help in the first few weeks of um, school, try to get those lofted for you, um, but it's not something we're offering to all students this year. Um, also, any and all housing related questions, um, you can email reslife at pugetsound.edu. Okay, so 
one more plug for start putting those questions in the Q&A. We're about to get to them. Um, Anya, I'm going backpacking. Where are all the backpacking trips going? Yeah, so all of our different backpacking trips will be on the Olympic Peninsula, um, which is really exciting. Um, and they start at various different trailheads. Um, some of the intermediate groups will be starting at a place called Big Quillacine or a place called Copper Creek. Um, we also have our beginning group will be going to a location called Camp Handy, which is really awesome. Um, our advanced group will be starting at Soul Duck um, and they'll go to a place called Deer Lake and Seven Mile. Um, and then our other intermediate group will also be starting at a place called Upper Dungeness Trailhead. Um, so various different places, but they'll all be on the Olympic Peninsula um, and they'll all have like similar terrain, but slightly different. Um, they're all really, really fun backpacking areas. And I can vouch for that as someone who did backpacking as my passages immersive experience and also led a passages backpacking experience last year. Great, thank you. How can I request, nope, we've already addressed that one, so sorry. Where do I find extra long sheets? That's a good question for me, it is. Um. <laughs> I do know that we use a program. Um, I'm trying to think of where it's located on our website. Maybe you. Can, I think I don't know what it's called right now. Um, we do, but we we work alongside a program where you can actually order the sheets through that if you would like. Um, but you can also go to a Target, a Walmart, um, and anywhere that you could TJ Maxx. That's a good one if you want like stylish ones. Um, yeah, um, you can go to really any place you would get other sheets and you can buy sheets that will fit your bed. Um, reminder that they're the twin XL um, sheets for your bed. Great, thank you. For anyone, is it chaotic to be moving into your room at the same time as your roommate? Um, I coordinated with my roommate and also I like chatted with her over Instagram and over text and FaceTime a little bit before I moved in. So we had a pretty smooth move in process, I would say. Um, and we also coordinated like Emily was talking earlier about bringing certain items. So like I brought a mini fridge and she brought a microwave. Um, I think you can also, like you have a certain move in time, but you know, as long as you're getting your items into that room at that, you know, around that time, you could also like take a little break and go do your passages check-in or something after you've put your items in that room and let your roommate have some time. Um, so I think just, you know, use your communication skills and chat about that. Um, but I think it can be doable to move in at the same time. Great, thank you. For Emily, can you please clarify the process for shipping items ahead of time again, please? Yeah, so you can start on August 1st. Um, there isn't, I think it it is just 1500 North Warner Street um, is what you'll put on your Tacoma, Washington 98416 um, is what you'll put in and how to ship it to our mail room and that will take it right to the mail room. And then um, on move in day, they will already have it sorted. Um, and so then you'll just find your belongings there um, and pick them up and bring them to your room. Um, really, however you want to ship them, if you want like boxes and maybe it's something really fragile, you can choose to like bubble wrap, those type of things. Um, that's really your own uh, personal preference, but they'll just be here on move-in day. Um, someone from the mailroom will be helping facilitate your pickup. So. Oftentimes that means that we are set up out in Wheelock parking lot um, with a big, moving container basically where your items will be. The, the only thing I would add is making sure you include your campus mailbox number um, because that'll help them sort specifically for you. And you can find that on your My Puget Sound portal. Emily, is there a curfew for students? <laughs> oh, no, there's not. Um, I only said all because you know you are getting a lot of freedom. Um, there is a lot of freedom. 
Um, there's not a curfew. Um, this is your space. This is your home. You get to choose um, when, when you leave and when you um, come back. Um, I always encourage, this is just, uh, maybe this is me projecting a little bit, but I think like the first few weeks that you're here and this is a new area for you, like being with someone and traveling with someone or being really smart um, about how, if you are doing something solo, um, knowing your resources and your support system here um, and knowing that security is 24 hours, um, seven days a week. Um, you can always call them if you're on or uh, really close to campus and they'll be there for you. Um, so you do not have a curfew. Um, it is your space. You have your own swipe. Um, that's 24 hour access into your building and then your own key, which is 24 hour access into your room. Um, but your roommate, if you have a roommate, might not <laughs> want you coming in at 4 a.m. So I think that that's another time to use your communication skills um, and being honest with one another about your needs. Um, and just to kind of, when Skylar had mentioned uh, it being like chaotic, I think something to um, note is that when you're moving in with your roommate, it's important to think about beforehand, like what's important to me, what am I willing to collaborate on and what am I willing to not collaborate on? I think we're really quick to say like, yes, 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 when we're first meeting someone for some personalities and some people. And I think especially people that are um, learning about boundaries and being yourself here, it's important to think about what your needs are. Um, and we do have a document that your RA will sit down with you and your roommate to help facilitate that conversation um, and kind of set some of those expectations for the year. But before you're even doing that, um, thinking about, you know, before you move in, what's important to me? Um, what's important to me throughout the year? And, you know, how do I want to foster this relationship with my roommate? Um, they're not always going to be your best friend. Um, they're going to be your roommate. And that's and that's OK. Some of the, <laughs> some of the best roommates are not best friends. Um, and so, you know, having that expectation, too, when you're coming. Great. We, we are getting a lot of questions about the bed lofting piece. Could you maybe clarify the difference between what it means when you say you can just, if it's low to the ground, you just flip it over. What kind of space does that actually give me mm -hmm. versus a fully lofted bed? Yeah, I wish I would have said this sooner. So my apologies. Lofting at this um, university, we do not have modular furniture, which I know some universities have. Your bed is not being lofted so high that you can go under it. Um, what has been offered in the past is a few feet off the ground, which some people have been able to slide storage under. Um, so really, I would say more of a raised bed, think more of like a raised bed. Um, and so to find a solution to that is just th be smart about your storage solution. So if you were thinking about storing things under your bed, maybe think about buying an extra storage, you know, drawer set, you're going to have a whole wardrobe, which is it's essentially a closet. Um, and so knowing that those are your storage opportunities, you know, your desk drawers, your wardrobe, um, thinking about how can I store my other belongings that I might have put under my bed and that might not be an opportunity this year. Um, so think more raised bed, not, it's not lofted high that you can like be under it. I hope that's helpful. Uh, the, the exact dimensions are uh, 36 inches from the floor to the bottom of the bed. Of, Get it, Emma. Get it. <laughs> I put my whole desk under my first year and could sit at my desk. I'm short, but that worked for me. That gave me a lot more space in the room. I will also say I helped a friend move in to their room and she had her bed that was like low, low to the ground. And then like the like tall legs of the bed were up. And it's actually really easy to like with one other person just like pull it over, I don't know, like flip it over. And so then the tall legs are on the bottom, short little pieces are at the top and you have that 36 inches of space for storage underneath. And I definitely used that as my like main storage space was boxes under my bed. Great, for passages leaders, are there itineraries or schedules for the different the specific immersive experiences? And if so, where would I find those or when do we get them? Oh yeah, we definitely have schedules for immersive experiences. Um, they, some of them are still getting like the last details finalized. And so um, you can see probably on your schedule what your immersive experience is and as we get closer to um, passages week, those schedules will be finalized. And when you are here, for sure, your your leaders will have your schedule and you will have 
you will know like what you are doing. Um, but there is there is a schedule and there is a plan and it's all broken down and there's all sorts of great stuff information on it. So. Where do we pick up our logger ID cards? Um, logger cards this year will be available to pick up in the rotunda, which is located in Wheelock Student Center, also known as the sub. Um, and also at that time, if you haven't had a chance to get um, to take that photo for your ID card, that service will be available as well. So you can either pick up your card that's already been created or they can create the card right there for you. But we recommend submitting a photo in advance. Please. This is for anybody. What are student parking options and what do we need to do for car registration or permitting? Okay. I will say one of my favorite things about this campus and having a car is that parking is free. That is huge. Um, so to register your car, it's pretty simple. You go on your My Puget Sound and one of the one of the tabs lets you, at least this is what I've done in the past, lets you just put in your vehicle information number and then um, you come to school and you go to security services offices and they give you a little sticker that and that you can put on your car uh, and then they'll explain to you like oh you're you live in this res hall here are these highlighted areas where you can park um, i will say i've never had a problem with parking on campus even though sometimes there's like busier times of day to find parking i've always found a spot and it has always been a pretty easy process to get my sticker and everything Are all the res halls co-ed? Uh, yes, all the res halls are co-ed by floor. And yeah. What if I can't remember what equipment I need needed to borrow for my immersive experience? Um, so different overnight immersive experiences, backpacking and car camping um, have different, you know, equipment required for them. Um, again, you can look at that packing list um, and there will also be during Passages Week a gear check where your Passages leader will go through with you all the gear that you need, make sure that you have it. You'll actually physically bring your gear to that meeting and then you will be able to rent um, any gear, certain types, I will say, um, from our on-campus um, expeditionary, the XB, um, which is our outdoor center. And they have a lot of different things to rent. They have backpacks to rent, sleeping pads, sleeping bags. Um, we even have some limited like hiking boots or like different layering options available. So um, if for some reason you've forgotten to bring something, there will be an opportunity to still um, grab those rentals during Passages Week. Great, thank you. There's a lot on the Passages schedule as you've all been seeing in your My Puget Sound. Do we need to attend everything? I think you wanna take a stab at it and I'll jump in after, or do you want me to just go for it? Yeah, um, we, there are certain things on your schedule that are going to be mandatory this year, or like we highly, highly, highly recommend that you go to these things. Um, and then certain things in the evening will be more optional. Um, but the things that we like really highly recommend you to be showing up for are things like your immersive experiences, um, and any of the activities really where you're going to be meeting people and connecting with people, um, especially important things to attend are like the, um, the community, like, yeah, hall meetings um, and anything that like really goes over like policies and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Skylar. 
you definitely want to go to all of the academic orientation components. That is going to set you up for success academically here. It will help you meet your advisor, your peer advisor, get a sense of the academic environment here at Puget Sound. I would say that most things you would be really strongly encouraged to go to. We don't plan things just for the heck of it, with the exception of some of the evening things that are, or the lawn game time or the water fun activities or there are some of those things that are really there just to facilitate some of that community connection piece but are potentially less important if you need to go take a nap and take care of yourself please do that we will on the saturday morning after move-in day we will be going over the passages schedule with you all at a overview meeting and we'll get into more detail about the places you really need to prioritize and make sure you have energy to be fully present at What is it like to live in Tacoma without a car? Uh, I, I, uh, I do not have a car. I have a bike home. I have a bike and I found it very easy uh, to get around Tacoma, either by biking or um, by walking around. There's a Safeway near campus. So if you would like to get groceries, you can go down, down there. I know where a Goodwill is, as well as a Target, which is within like 20 minute bike. Um, if you there and there is buses in Tacoma, they can be they don't have the best uh, time. But if you plan your trip well, you can get to downtown uh, Tacoma pretty easily. Uh, and I would say it's it's very doable. And you know, I've done I've gone to been able to get to wherever I need to go within a very reasonable time table. The only thing I would add to that is that um, there are going to be people that hopefully you meet and create relationships with that will have a car. And as someone who had a car my first year, I was always really happy to like let people know when I was going to go grocery shopping or where, when I was going to go out to see if anyone else needed to come with me that didn't have a car. Um, so I think that that also um, can help open up some more options for getting around Tacoma, as well as all of the other kinds of transportation options that Emma highlighted. Great. So alongside that, what's it like to have a bike on campus and where can I store it? Oh, uh, yeah, they, we, there is a variety of different of different bike rooms as well as um bike like areas like outdoor bike racks rack yep that's the <laughs> word uh which you could put your bike i've never had any problem putting my bike um having my bike somewhere additionally you can also register your bike with security services uh which will help if it get lost if it gets lost or stolen uh, and yeah, there's a lot of bike uh, storage space. Yeah, I have a couple things to add. Um, if you're in South Quad, there's going to be a bike room in both Seward and TP. Um, and so that I think that that's the safest bet. We have had bike theft on campus. Um, security is pretty honest about that and transparent about what you need to do. Um, they recommend the U-bolt locks going around your frame of your bike instead of your tires, your wheels. Um, we're in a city area. That's just the reality of it. It's great for walkability, but it's also the reality is there's people here. Um, so if you're curious about, you know, what's the safest way registering your bike, um, you can talk to security about some of that too. But having it in the building um, where only people that have swipe access into that space, um, that hall, um, we never have bike. I, this whole past year that I was here, we didn't have issues when they were inside the halls. Um, so, and then in North Quad, they have a bike room in Schiff. Um, and anyone that's in North Quad can swipe into Schiff um, and use that bike room space. So if you live in AL, you'll have access to that, to that room to utilize too. Great, thank you. Will everyone get a printed version of their passages schedule? No. However, there is a really great app 
that we will help you download on your first day or at the overview session on Saturday morning that makes the schedule really accessible. It links to the campus map to help you find your way around and get to the right location, has access to the descriptions of all of the events. So you will have that in hand. Um, to try to make that as easy as possible. It will also be posted in your residence halls and in the student union building. Anything you want to add to that? Okay. If I've already rented gear and I forgot, how would I find out if I still need that gear or if it is reserved for me? Yeah, um, you can email us passages at pugetsound.edu um, and we can get some of those answers for you. Um, again, all gear rental pickups will be at the XB, the expeditionary here on campus, our outdoor center. Um, and those pickups will be available starting on move-in day um, and also then after we do equipment check there will also be time to continue to do those pickups. But if you have a question or concern about equipment rentals um, or can't remember about something, email us passages um, at PugetSound.edu. Great, thank you. We have about nine, 10 minutes left. So if there are any last minute questions, please feel free to throw them in the Q&A so that we can try to address them. Also to note that if, someone you know is coming here and they weren't able to attend this this evening. It is being recorded and will be sent out to all of you via an email tomorrow or the next day by end of the week. What are the activities that are available for parents during move-in weekend and when should parents plan to leave? There is a parent orientation that will run all day Saturday, it kicks off with a parent brunch at 11 a.m. on Saturday morning. If your student is an athlete, there's also an athlete parents uh, reception at 10 a.m. that morning. Um, and it runs all the way through six o'clock in the evening. So five to six is a free, have your last dinner with your student and get ready to say goodbye. They have an event that starts at six o'clock in Schneebeck Concert Hall. So by quarter to six, it's time to say goodbye, give those last hugs um, and say your farewells. Um, Friday evening, the Black Alumni Union is hosting their um, welcome dinner for Black and African-American students and their families. That is an RSVP only event and you should have received an email um, if you self-identified as Black or African-American. And Saturday evening um, during that five to six o'clock hour is a similar welcome dinner hosted by Sin Fonteras and our Latinx alumni union as well. Um, so those are two highlights. Friday evening after our opening convocation ceremony is the welcome picnic and that is an opportunity for families to come and join in a picnic over on Carlin Quad and spend some quality time together before your students head to their first residence hall meeting that evening. So final farewells and goodbyes at 545 on Saturday. Anything to add to those pieces? Okay, we are coming to the end here. How does a meal plan work? Is it only for the diner? And is there a specific card? Yeah, so our meal plans um, give you dining dollars um, and those meal plans and those dining dollars can be used in our dining hall, also in our three cafes on campus. So Diversions Cafe, Lilith Cafe and Oppenheimer Cafe, as well as in um, the C store, the seller store, which is basically like a tiny little grocery store or market, um, and then as well in the cellar, which is our like pizza restaurant in the bottom of Wheel Off Student Center, also known as the sub. Um, and so you'll have those dining dollars, that money loaded onto your logger card, that same card that swipes you into residence halls, you'll also swipe at all those different cafes um, or at the diner, and that is what you will use um, to pay for food with your meal plan.
All right. Any last words or final thoughts that the panelists might like to share before we wrap today this evening? The only thing I have to add to that last question and Anya's answer is that there's a few different kinds of meal plans. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember if they're like A, B, C, and D or, yeah, okay. And so those different meal plans have a different, they're, they're a different cost and they give you a different amount of dining dollars. And so um, I went into my freshman year with like a, a C meal plan, I think. And then I like reduced down when I realized I didn't actually like use as much of that money. Um, but it's really up to you. They have like little descriptions about like what, like if you're a, this kind of eater, this kind of meal plan is great for you. And so taking a look at that and deciding like what, what seems like it's best for you. And then you can always add more money to your, to your meal card or to your, yeah, to your dining plan. Thank you. Last thoughts before we wrap. We're really, really excited for all of you to come here. We've been working really hard all summer and over the school year to try and create just a really awesome time for us all to like spend time together, to connect, to learn about the things that you need to know to flourish here at UPS. And so um, I will say I'm really, really, really excited for all of you to come here and to meet you all. I'm pumped to see you on move-in day. I cannot wait. Um, our residence life student leaders aren't here yet, but I'm gonna speak for them. I know they're going to be pumped because we're gonna train for it for several weeks before. Um, and they're just gonna be thinking about it. They're gonna have the halls decked out, door decks for you when you get here. Um, we're really excited for you to be here um, and to make like the halls your home. I'm excited about that. Just to kind of reiterate the same thing, Will and I are so excited to meet everyone. Um, if you want to come see us when you first get here, we'll be around during passages. We'll have our little shirts that say success coaching. So hopefully we'll be really recognizable. Um, but if you want to come meet us, the easiest way to remember where we are is if you just ask someone, where's the food pantry? The food pantry and the lending library and Will and I's offices is all there is in this little blue house where we live. So um, just come, come in search of food and you'll find us. Come join RSA. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you all so much for joining us this evening or afternoon depending on where you're joining us from um, we are really truly excited to welcome you it is always an incredible joy to meet the incoming class meet your families and then get to start walking with you on this journey of college I know that sounds corny but for, for me as a professional here, it is, it is a truly a joy to get to know all of you in different ways throughout your time here. And we just are excited to meet you. So we'll see you soon. Thank you. Lots of yeah. jobs. <laughs>